shining a bright red as always is I, Red Luster, and today we'll be taking a look at all the killers in Dead by Daylight to think of ways to fix or help them to be better. We will be starting with the very original killer, the Trapper. So before we begin, let's take a look at Trapper's stats and powers. As for stats, Trapper is rather basic. He has a movement speed of 4.6 meters, which is only 0.6 faster than Survivor's. In terms of percent, survivors move at 100%, Trapper moves at 115%. It, it sounds like a lot, but in the grand scheme, it's not really that much faster. It's made a lot worse by the fact that Trapper and most other killers can only climb through windows slowly and can't travel through pallets without breaking them. The only exception is being Nurse and Legion so far, but we'll talk about them later. Trapper's other base stat is his terror radius. The terror radius is a radius in which survivors can hear a heartbeat signifying the killer's approach. It tends to get more intense the closer or further away you are depending on uh, how large the radius is. Trapper's terror radius is 32 meters, which is standard for most killers that don't rely on some kind of stealth. Moving on, the Trapper's power. All killers in Dead by Daylight have unique powers that all kind of give them a different kind of edge against the survivors. Some killers can turn invisible, dash at high speed, teleport, or even control zombies. So what terrifying power does Trapper have? It's to place down bear traps. Uh, oh wait, he can also pick them up. Or get trapped in them himself. Uh, yeah, Trapper's power is incredibly basic. By default, Trapper can only carry one trap at a time, and once that trap is set, it can usually be easily found and then disabled by a survivor. Trapper's traps can also, like I said earlier, snare himself, which results in him getting stunned and humiliated at the same time. On the bright side, however, when a survivor steps in a trap, it not only injures them, but pins them down until they can free themselves or until someone else frees them. When pinned, the trapper can either just hit them and knock them right into a dying state, or they can just pick them up right up out of the trap. The thing is, good luck getting to the survivor in time. When a survivor is trapped, they will have the option to try and free themselves. The option allows them to take an attempt to free themselves. Every attempt only takes about two seconds, and it has a 16.67% chance of working. However, if after six attempts you fail to free yourself, you will always free yourself on the next attempt. So basically, your amount of attempts can either be one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven, but no more than seven because at the seventh one, you will always get out. So if you take into account the animation of you getting trapped, the minimum time that you would have to stay trapped is about five seconds. You know, the trap animation, you attempting to escape and getting out. Whereas at maximum, if you were to attempt all six times, it'd only be about 15 seconds, give or take. The math is a little shaky, but it's not very long is the point. What makes this even worse is the fact that if another survivor helps to trap survivor, they will completely circumvent the random chance and just free them within one and a half seconds. So basically, if you get trapped and someone's nearby, you're basically going to get away free unless the killer is already right on top of you. But hey, that's just Trapper's base kit. Most uh, all killers can alter their power through the items called add-ons. So let's see what kinds of Trapper has. Trapper has bags, setters, springs, jaws, dies, and stones. However, Trapper can only bring two of any kind with him, and this goes for all killers. Thing is, Trapper will always suffer in some kind of way since he can only pick two. That's because his base power isn't very good. 
and kind of needs a little help from everything. Bags can be used to increase the amount of traps that Trapper can carry at once. However, this still dictates the need to pick them up individually. You will start with extra traps, but yeah, you still have to go around and pick them up. Um, setters will increase the speed at which you can put the traps down, which is really good because a lot of the time, it helps to mitigate a lot of the time lost picking up traps and putting them down. Springs can make survivors have to spend more time disarming traps, whilst dies can make it so that they're harder to see to begin with. Jaws will often make it so that when a survivor does get out of a trap, they'll be leaving with some consequences. Lastly, stones have unique effects each, from either putting survivors in the dying state for trying to free themselves, to making traps harm themselves one at a time every 30 seconds. So, with that all out of the way, let's finally move on to fixing the trapper. I think I and many killers and players agree that Trapper is way too reliant on his add-ons to make his power worth using. Trying to use his power as by itself with no add-ons, you might as well not bother using it at that point, because it's just going to be that weak. Unless you really get a survivor in a very bad situation for you can set up several traps in one place like the basement, you're pretty much never going to use the traps because they're going to be super easy to see and super easy to get rid of. So let's tweak some numbers before we move on to something bigger. Let's start with trap amounts. By default, I think trappers should be able to carry at least two. I think this change would help trappers not have to waste so much time going from trap to trap to individually set them. And Placing every trap one at a time often just leads to survivors running over, disarming them, and then running back away because they'll be too busy picking up another one. And let's be honest, only being able to use one trap at a time, it kind of necessitates the use of bags. Because it saves you so much time and allows you to apply a lot more pressure. Next, uh, the trap colors themselves. They're, the bear traps that Trapper uses are like a bright bronze color by default, which if you place them anywhere but tall grass will make them stand out like a sore thumb. I'd have to say the darkness that the traps get from the logwood dye would probably be a good choice for a default on the traps themselves, you know, make them that dark by default. Lastly, let's decrease the setting time. Whilst it only takes about two and a half seconds to set a trap, you have to keep in mind he has to do this so often to set traps and reset traps many, many times during a trial, then that kind of time can add up quickly. You know, you have to keep in mind that's time you're not chasing or uh, pressuring gens or... It's literally just time you have to set aside to use your power. So I think having the ability to set traps faster will give a uh, trapper more time to pressure survivors instead of just spending the first half of the match basically ignoring all of them. Now with all the power tweaks aside, now the way, I want to introduce an idea that can help Trapper become more mobile with the Entity's Favor. This will be a new ability for the Trapper. It's an ability that has a cooldown. With this ability, the Trapper can select a bear trap from across the map and do one of two things with it. If he taps the alternate power button, the selected trap will teleport to his grasp and cause a very short cooldown on the ability. However, if a trapper holds the ability instead and fills up a meter, he can teleport to that trap, causing a long cooldown on his ability, as well as briefly stun him as he's done teleporting. You know, to give survivors a chance to get away from the trap he teleported to. It wouldn't be fair if a trapper could just teleport to a trap immediately and just immediately go after a survivor, that wouldn't really be fair. Trapper would just literally just set one trap against every gen and just teleport to it immediately. I believe these changes to his kit will help Trapper to stop being an all eggs in one kind of basket killer, who effectively chooses what side of the map he's going to lose and which he's going to just fill with all of his traps. However, with these power tweaks and additions, I think he could probably do with a new downside. Of course, the add-ons Trapper would have need to be, you know, toned down a little bit to account for all the changes. However, to think, I think the best one I can come up with for the Entity's favor 
is to limit the amount of traps you can put in one tile of the map. Maybe limiting it to maybe two or three. Honestly, I don't see why you need three traps in one tile that's kind of going overboard. Unless it's a really complex tile, which is why I'd probably say two or three. But I think once, once you start putting more than three traps in one tile, then uh, either that tile needs to be changed because it clearly has too, many, too much going on in it, or I don't know. And that is how I would fix the trapper. What are your thoughts on my suggested changes? What would you do to, to uh, improve the trapper's gameplay? Let me know in the comments below what your ideas could be, or if you really like the ones that I've presented, or if you want to change my idea a little bit. This is an open discussion. This isn't meant to be like a trapper needs to have just more power, more power. I mean, he just needs to be tweaked so that he's not so add-on reliant and his playstyle can be a little more engaging. Because as it stands, now a lot of people play trapper. Anyway, make sure to let me know in the comments below. As always, share, like, and subscribe today if you haven't already. This has been Red Luster, signing out.